Okay, hello guys. Let's give it a minute before we start this webinar. Let's give it a minute. Let's give it a minute before. <clears throat> okay hey 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 guys thank you very much for joining me today for another vantage live trading session okay testing testing can you guys see my screen do let me know if you guys can see my screen Let me know if you guys can see my screen before we continue. Okay. Thank you very much for waiting. I do apologize for that. Okay, let us begin. Welcome to another. Welcome, Hi, everyone. Welcome to our Monday weekly forecast as we talk about key fundamental news events to expect for the week ahead along with their technical setups. We'll be highlighting the... Okay, give me a moment. We'll be highlighting our key news events, central bank notes, and key support and resistance levels to watch out for. This webinar is brought to you by Everest Fortune Group in collaboration with Vantage Markets. We are an award-winning research firm and finalists in 2019, 2020, and 2021 for best Forex and equity research. We work with the major financial institutions to help them forecast where the markets are heading. And now we have a special partnership with Vantage Markets where we are bringing you guys the good stuff every day. Okay, disclaimer, as usual, guys, this webinar is purely educational and nothing in this webinar should be construed as investment or trading advice. So, please do your own due diligence before you are trading. Okay, before we begin, let us introduce our analysts. First, we have Desmond Leong and he is our chief trader for the company. Next, we have Tianning. She's our investment analyst. And we have Jin Dao Tai, who is our prop trader and fundamental analyst. Next, it's me. Uh, my name is Chen Yong Jin, and I am the investment analyst for the company. Hey, welcome, Oleg Bota. Thank you for joining me today. Hey, let us continue. Okay, first, before we begin, before we begin, uh, we on VantageMarkets.com on the website, the latest updates for this, give me a moment, something dropped. Okay, the latest updates for Vantage is, we have a leverage of 500 to 1, our minimum deposit is $50. And you can actually check out our educational tools, which is educational webinars. Okay, educational webinars. And when you scroll down, you can actually see what are the upcoming webinars that we have. Like today, 5 p.m. Singapore time, it's a live trading session with me. Tomorrow, Tuesday, we have another session on trading the U.S. earning reports with Mr. Desmond Leong. 
Okay, let us jump right into the charts. Hey, by the way, if you guys got any trading, any charts that you would like me to take a look at, do let me know. You can actually send it into chat. Please send your chart into chat. Send it right here by pressing on the camera icon. Then you copy link to chart image. So if you copy link to chart image, I can actually take a look. You can send it to chat. We can discuss your trading ideas. There's no right or wrong. Just send it in. At the end of the day, everyone is learning rights. Okay. So let's move on. Let's, let's start by looking. What are the key news events for the day? Okay, there's not much news events that we are looking for, except for the Empire State's Manufacturing Index happening on the US dollar, which is at tonight, 8.30 p.m. Also, just to take notes for USD JPY, if you guys are trading it, there might be some sorts of stealth intervention at the 149 or 150 level. Why do I say so? It's because take a look at this at the 149 area. There, there's a possibility that we might see some sort of intervention. Or at the 150. Just do take a note out of it. I was checking the news and people are actually speculating whether USD JPY, once it touches this area, there might be some kind of intervention all the way down. So please be cautious if you are trading USD JPY. Is there any any currencies that you would like me to take a look at? Do let me know. Send it right over into the chat and I can check it out. So today is a Monday, so it's relatively slow. You know, personally, I try not to touch Mondays unless there's a very high probability setup that I would like to take. So let me take a look at MT4, my currencies. So normally what, what I like to do is I like to trade USD, Euro USD. So I'm actually devising a new trading method that might be possible. I'm just looking at it. So you take a look at this. So let's say I go to the daily charts on the 12th of October. I just mark. Okay, it's just simple as that. I mark out the daily high, daily low, and then I just jump straight to the 15 minutes. So you see, the moment price broke out once, twice, up, I can just set a sell stop at this zigzag with my stop loss here, my, my sell stop here, and stop loss at the top. So I can actually have a nice trade. But then again, where would I have taken the trade to? Just take it to the 50% area, possibly. It's just a just a simple, simple way that I'm actually looking at to minimize all the drawings, every single thing. Okay, this is not a good trade. This is what well, it's 0 0.18 risk to reward. It's actually very, very bad. So what am I looking out for today? On a daily, on euro, mark out the daily high and daily low. So I'm actually trying to minimize the time I actually take to, to you know, to mark out the charts. So let's say if you're looking at eight currencies, and I take ten minutes per currencies by the hour, by the hour end, at the end of the hour, I'll still be actually charting the eight currencies. So that is actually a mistake that I have discovered in my trading. I wouldn't call it a mistake, maybe a flaw. I take too much time planning. So once I mark out the daily high and daily low, I'll just do it fast this time. Lucky, luckily, I have the templates. So daily high and daily low. That's all I care now. So, and then I check out there might be some sort of market imbalance area. So it's right here. What is market imbalance? A quick run through on that is when price has not come to this area 
where you can possibly look for a price to come up to this area to tap right into that. Okay, looking at the hourly, there is not much movement. Well, there was actually quite a lot of fake outs, a lot. What you, you guys would like to call it a fake out. So, as usual, I mark out the Asian range. It goes from 7 p.m. New York time to 12 a.m. New York time. So, if you look, my timing has been set to the New York time. So, here it's 7 p.m. 7 p.m. all the way to 12 o'clock. The Asian range. So right now we have an issue with this. Price has, what has it done? It has cleared the Asian high. Mark it up nicely, Asian high. Pop. Okay, Asian high got cleared and same as the Asian low right here. You notice that these areas, Asian high and Asian low, right, have a lot of, uh, has a lot and a lot of reaction. So, price touches. Oh my. Okay. So, price touches the Asian high, it reflects down likewise to the Asian low. I, think I haven't renamed it Asian low. So, same thing if you look very carefully. Price just tapped in very, very minutely and it just reflected right off. So these areas are the kind of reversals that I like to look out for. So actually I missed out on this trade, on the Asian high trade. What I, what I could have done, what I could have improved on is maybe when price, I could have set a possible sell stop at this area. Why? Because this is the last area of resistance that caused the break of structure. So I could have set my stop loss, my sell stop here with my stop loss at the top. And it could have been a possible one to four risk to reward ratio trade. Well, and since today, there's a lot, a lot of movement up, down, up, down, non-stop. So after clearing the Asian high, clear the Asian low, and then it went back up again. Price reversed all the way up to clear the high again. So I'll call this, uh, it's nothing nice to trade. It's like a ranging market. So I haven't entered any trade yet. Especially you look at this huge bounce. It's not clean at all. So where am I looking for? a buy or a short right here. On the hourly chart, we have this point of interest. So I'll set this to green because since it's a buying area. So this I'll set this as point of interest, point of interest, one hour inside on the right side and then possibly what we can possibly look out for is for price to you know come down into this area before we wait for a break of structure and then we long it up so what do i mean by the break of structure it's this so when price forms a higher high. So we take it on the retracement, on the retracement down to, and then with the stop loss below, we can just long it up. So right now I'm waiting for price to touch this area on the hourly, or what is this area that I drew out? On the daily market imbalance. So I'll mark it out. Daily market imbalance so price this is an area that i'm looking for price to possibly head up to inside on the right side 
Oh, let me put it closer so you guys don't have to look so far. Okay, so what I like to do is just wait. Let the price do its work. So I'm looking for this area and this area. This area for a short and this area for a long. So it's just a waiting game. Let the market do what it wants. Okay, so moving on to here, what price can possibly do is sub break of structure retracement. That's when we take the cell down. Same thing, break of structure. It's right here. Let me re, re uh just say it one more time. What does BMS means? It means break of market structure. There's nothing much I'm drawing on the chart. It's a very, very simple chart right now. For the short, short we've stopped loss above and try to aim for at least a one to 1.5 trade or minimally one to one trade for risk to reward. Hey, if, if you have any charts, feel free to send it over. Any currency pairs that you want to take a look at, let me know on that too. So, you know, I can give my ideas, my thoughts on your charts. Okay, moving on. Let's look at maybe gold. Let's take a look at gold. What is going on with go? Same thing, just draw something. I'll just draw the daily high and daily low. I will not mark it out anymore. So this is how I will do it fast. Daily high, daily low, and then I just jump straight into the 15 minutes, maybe one hour to take a look at what might be going on. So price seem to be retracing to the 50% area using a Fibonacci. So I draw 50%. Okay, price is exactly resting on the 50% mark. Okay, 50% area. So we can look for possible, some kind of possible reaction to the downside. But as usual, we are in the 50% area. I would not take any trades at all because price can head up or head down. So if I'm taking a short, price goes up, it hits my stop loss. This is a risk that I'm not willing to take. I'm waiting for price to clear the high, high or clear the low. Okay, moving on. Okay, let me show you guys an example of a back test that I was looking at just now. So I was, I'm always talking about right now during this session. I'm always talking about trading the breakouts, break trading the breakout as in trade back into the daily candle. So let's take a look at the previous one. This is on the 13th of October, last Thursday. So we take a look on the 15 minutes. What happened? Price broke out of this area. But what happened? Where could we have entered? So let me draw this structure right here. So you saw this structure? To me, it looks like this. So we have the line of area, it breaks, 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 goes down, goes up, and it continues going up. So where could we have entered? We could have entered here with a buy stop. We could have simply set a buy stop at this line, a buy stop here, and stop loss below just using purely a buy stop. So with that being said, why don't we choose a why don't we choose a take profit? Why don't we use this line from top to bottom? We are not going to do that because previously price has already retraced from the top to the bottom. So price from the top goes down and it has already retraced. So this to me is invalid. So we'll be moving on to this area with our 50% area right here. 
So if we actually took this trade last Friday at 4 at around 6 p.m. Singapore time or 6 a.m. New York time, we could have took profits with a risk to reward of a 1 to 2. 1 to 2. It would have been a pretty, pretty nice trade. See, you can see now price is reacting around this area. Always look out for the low hanging fruits. What do I mean by low hanging fruits? The previous low or the previous high. So you just wait, just basically just wait for price to clear the previous low. And then you search for a long. Price breaks the previous high, you search for a short. It's as simple as that. That is just scalping small movements. Okay, moving on, let me clear out this area. On GU, let us take a look at GU. Okay, same thing, go to the daily. Let us take a look at what, what might be going on on GU. Okay, same thing, B, daily high and daily low. Where could we might? Where could we have a buy entry? Okay, since we have the daily high and daily low, but take notes, we, are, we don't want to go up, go up, go up, go up, go up, and up to here, clears, and then we don't want to short. This is not what, why we want to short, not here. Because you look to your left, there is this area, and this area right here. So this area acts as a form of liquidity. So I'll set this area as the buy side liquidity. Buy side liquidity, top right. So what I would like preferably is for price to go up, come down, go up even higher before it does a retracement down. This would be an ideal scenario for GU. As usual, I'll take profits. Let's say it was up there. Could have a take profits at this 50% equilibrium area. 50% at that area. Okay. That's just an ideal scenario for GU. Same thing. Let's say GU is going for a short. Let's just give a scenario as that. So we don't want, same thing, we don't want price to clear this small little area and then we try to search for a long. It would usually hit our stop loss because we are not looking to the right, I mean to the left on what is happening down here. There is liquidity on this candle and imbalance right here, market imbalance. So let's mark it out. Liquidity, right here, mark it out, sell side liquidity, and we have a market imbalance zone right here on the 15 minutes chart. So a preferable, a nicer scenario for GU is the price to come lower, clear this entire area, and then we have our buy stop. You can just set a buy stop at this area. Stop loss below. Same thing. Take profits at the 50% area. Okay, so this is actually not a good trade. It's 0 0.73. Just remember to always look out for your risk to reward ratio. So let's say it's even lower right here. Let's just give a scenario as that. So your take profit could have been one to two or something. Just take notes. Always have a minimum of one to one risk to reward ratio. So it's just a rinse and repeat. So I have given you guys two types of scenario that might happen to GU. Let's move on 
Where's okay? I already said go. Let's maybe move on to Euro AUD. Euro Aussie dollar. So let's check what's happening on the daily. High seems to have almost touched the daily high and there we go. Let's move on to the hourly. Price has okay. The price cleared. Oh yes, it did very, very minutely. This is on the hourly chart. Why well, I have to zoom in so much just to see this small little tiny whip. So let's move out of the chart. We could have earlier on sets a sell stop at this area where the previous area that caused the break of structure the break of structure right there so we could have set the sell stop sell stop here stop loss there and the tick profits area could possibly be to be safe possibly be at this area right here 1.46 risk to reward but this happened okay it happened on sunday that's weird okay it's actually monday i just saw let me change the timing in case you guys get confused because it says sunday right here okay monday it happened earlier on at 9 30 a.m singapore time or 9 30 p.m new york time moving on to euro cat let's take a look okay daily high and daily low Okay, there's not much movement going on. I'm just waiting for price to clear this area. So let's just move on to backtesting this pair. On let's move on to last Thursday on the 13th of October. Okay, there actually isn't much where price actually went down. Okay, so let's move on daily. It may be here where we could have potentially found a short. Okay, price did not go all the way. So, what do we have? Daily high and daily low. And our price broke this area before it went back down, but I'm looking for price to clear this area. So, if counting for spread. If you set it right here, it would not have hit. And it would have been a very, very bad trade also. Because your risk to reward, it will be possibly. Okay, it's not even there. Okay, this is an invalid trade. Okay, let's move to maybe you would. EJ, EG, Euro GBP. Let us look on the daily. Let us back test how we could have possibly entered this short right here. So, daily go and daily high. Okay, nice. We have a nice, nice scenario. So norm, just now I was saying, what I like to see is price come down, go down, go down, and break our structure before we go for a long. But in this scenario, we can look for a continuation. So it goes down, goes down, and the third one, we can start to find 
a retracement cell entry like this one. So you see, goes, goes, same thing, three times. So where could we have entered? Looking down, look, looking at this area, price actually reflected off the daily low. So you reflected once, twice, broke. Next, we enter on the market's imbalance area right here. Great. With out. Okay, it's a bit too long. With our stop loss, entry here. Stop loss at the very, very top. The last area that caused the break of structure. So with that in place, wow, okay, this is a nice trade. But then let's find another trade so that we can back test on. Go to the daily. Why am I so far back? So let's see how can we catch this trade. A possible trade like this. From here, short downwards. Let's take a look. 15 minutes. Okay. Price went down, uh, went up, cleared the area. Where the zigzag. You can set your okay. Actually, if you guys actually take your zigzag as smaller in a smaller scenario, something like this. So it's zigzag, zigzag, zigzag. If you guys take this area as a zigzag, you can actually set a sell stop right here. With your stop loss above. And you would have hit your 50% area. See? It hit very nicely before it reflected right off. The 50% area is pretty important because it's the equilibrium area. Okay, let's move on to another area. Okay, do you guys want me to teach you smart money concepts? Do let me know. My main trading style is, let me type out in the chat, smart money concepts, or like off. Do let me know which, which method you guys want me to trade. Smart money concepts of white box. Do let me know in the chat which one you guys would want me to use. Okay. Okay. I will teach you guys smart money concepts. Thank you for letting me know in the chat in Zoom. Okay, I appreciate it. Smart money concepts. Okay, if you want a very, very technical, very, very technical way of entering a trade, this is what I would do. So let's look back. I'll change the timing back to New York. UTC minus four. So same thing. I mark out the Asia session until 12 o'clock. Okay, midnight. 
let's take a look. Let's clean the whole charts first. Okay, so from 7 p.m. to 12 o'clock. So we have the, let me mark out this area. Okay, this time frame is on the 15 minutes M15 time frame. So why am I marking out the Asia range? This is on the M15 chart. I'll mark it out as the Asia range. Top center. So I'm actually looking for a trade. How I would personally trade. This is very, very technical. Okay, I wouldn't say that technical, but this is how I would trade. So Asian range, hey, no problem, Jill, Jill, no problem. Hey, thank you very much for tuning in. I appreciate it. Oh yeah, and if you do have uh, any 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 charts that you would like me to take a look at, hey, do let me, just send it to me. Let's copy link to a chart image and send it over to chat. We can view your charts live. So you can copy link to the chart image and send it right over. You can send it to me after we can you know discuss it live. There's no right or wrong. All's good. So I can know what you are currently looking at and I can give my insights. So for the Asian range, what I'll be looking at and the daily. So I marked it out previously was here. So I like to mark out the daily high and the daily low. I'll, this is the previous daily high and daily low. We are actually now back testing on the 14th of October, Friday, last Friday, where we could have entered a trade. So you can see price actually cleared the daily high nicely. So how do I mark out this area? I'll mark out this area as previous daily high. And this area is the previous daily low. Bottom right. So you can see during the Asian session, during the Asian session, price actually went up and cleared the previous daily high. So what we are waiting for is price to either, price could have possibly went higher, cleared the Asian high, or as you can see right here, price cleared the Asian low. So actually last Friday, there wasn't much good trades that's actually going on. So I'll mark out this area as price cleared the Asian low right here. Asian low. So I only trade uh, London and New York. So Asian low, mark out this area. What I'll do is I'll wait for price to come down, go back up. What I want to see is an order flow, a nice order flow where price respects some kind of area and it continues going down. So we actually do have it right here. Very, very small, smart money concepts. Look at this area. Price went down, cleared the Asian low before it went back up to clear the market imbalance. Market imbalance zone right here. So to make it cleaner for you to see it properly, it's right here. Set it as a red box. And price reflected, respected this area and it continued going down. So where could I and why could I, where could I where could I have entered after price broke this low? So I'll be looking for retracement, right? I wouldn't be looking for some kind of sell stop. So let's say you set a sell stop, your risk to reward, you would have a probably risk to reward to the next market imbalance right here. See price tap nicely into that. Price tapped nicely into that. But we can actually refine it instead of setting a sell stop. So how do we do that? How do we do that? Same thing, if you guys need a refresher, this is the M15 market imbalance zone. Price previously did not come here to touch. And it tapped in nicely before it bounced. 
So let's move on to the five minutes. Let's get it smaller and smaller. So what do we have here? What do we have here? Instead of a cell stop here, we could, okay, there isn't much. We could have continued to price G went up and it cleared the market imbalance on the five minutes. Wait, where could we have increased our risk to reward? So right now we actually have, a, since we, are, we actually did a sell stop, we are at a 2.22 risk to reward ratio. So how could we have further improved it? Maybe let's go down to the four minutes or maybe one minute chart to further improve it. So if you can see carefully, take a look very carefully. This is this entire block is the five minutes on. Just now I actually drew it on five minutes already. So we can see right here, very, very minutely, there is a market imbalance right there. So you can see price came up to clear it nicely. So if you actually marked out top down analysis all the way down to the one minute, you can see you could have increased your risk to reward. So right now it's a 2.22, you can see right here. But if I push it up, my risk to reward became. 3.38 risk to reward ratio. You actually increase. So what I want, so what I, I like it when it happens, taps and immediately goes down. It would have been a very, very nice trade. But you know, there are some people who actually like to do 30 seconds. So I did see people previously request 30 seconds. So let's go to 30 seconds chart. Maybe we can refine it down even further. A mad refination. Okay, so it's the same. So it, it didn't make a difference. So let's look back at the five minutes chart. This is back on the five minutes chart after the refined entry. Look, it's a very nice 3.38 risk to reward ratio. But again, you'll be wondering why? Why did price come down? And then went back up. By then, oh, I would have shaky hands. So I would have closed my trade already. But why? There must always be an explanation on why price bounce instead of reaching the take profit area, right? Well, look to your left. There is a market imbalance right here too. Box green. There is a five minutes area. Market imbalance zone. So, what you could have done is possibly take partials right here. Partial, partial out your trade when price reach out this reach this area, and before you set your trade to break even. So let's say you already took partial at the fifty percent area. So what I like to do is normally if I have a first area to partial. So I'm using a gun box. Look at this. Very, very clean. So I will have partialed my trade right here at the 50% mark and leave the rest to run, hopefully to hit take profit. But I will have set break even by then in case price reversed all the way up. So with the partial in place, took partials, my trade hit break even before it hit take profit. So in this case, I would have probably, let's say I close 80% and the rest hit break even. So instead, it would have been a 1 to 1 1.23, but taking the 80% into account, 80% of 2.23 is 1.6 or 1.7 around there. 1.7 risk to reward even after taking partials and breaking even. So always know how to manage your trade psychology by taking partials when you are trading. Okay, Wait. okay. You, do you want to screenshot this down before I continue? Hey, Jill, thank you very much for joining. Do you understand so far what I've been teaching? If you have any questions, do let me know, Jill. Do let me know so I can further explain. 
if there are any questions. So this trade actually hit break even if I would have entered. Screenshot this before I continue. Okay, moving on to the current day's chart. So today is actually a very, very bad day. Charts is trading sideways. So, same thing. I mark out the Asian range. So from 7 p.m. New York time to 12 a.m. New York time. So you can actually see price cleared the Asian low. Asian low right here. And it also cleared the Asian high. Let me change it. Top Asian high. So right now at this area, price this is actually not a clean movement. I'll see it as ranging, create the high, create the low, and it continued in this area. So for today, I will not be touching EU at all. Nothing much for EU unless price clears above. Clears above possibly this high right here or all these lows right here where we could possibly just maybe look for a long when price comes down along here or a short scalp for price to come down so always look out for the high hanging fruits or the low hanging fruits area so always wait for best possible setups i always like to wait for the high and low of any area to be cleared especially in this area so to mark it out cleaner today I'll mark it out my today's uh, previous daily high and daily low. So the previous daily high was right here. And the previous daily low was right here. Okay, I think I, I drew it a bit too long. Okay, what I preferably want is for price to Clear out this. Wait, let me copy this thing. Okay, I think you already know this. This this marked out area is the Asia, Asia range. So what we can possibly look for is for price to tap into these points of interest on the M fifteen. So I'll mark it out. UI on the M fifteen chart sent inside. Right. So what we can look out for is price to possibly come back down before we search for a long to the upside. So this area is a better area for a long. And what do we have here? A better area for shorts would be for price to go all the way up before it's uh, using an RSI oversold where we can look for shorts downwards. But where we are looking to the left on the daily, let, let us move to the daily. Where could price possibly go on the daily chart? You can see right here on the daily charts, we have a market imbalance zone right here. Box weight, same thing, market imbalance, this area where price previously did not went to. So we can look for price to potentially, just maybe, to head up, head up, tap into that area, go down, break of structure, and we get our shot right there. These are the two scenarios that I'm actually looking for, for EU right now. So do screenshot this before we continue. Do screenshot this, take it down before we continue. These are two possible scenarios. Let me write it out before we continue. 
Hey, what currencies are you looking at right now, Jill? Do you let me know? So maybe I can take a look at it too together with you. Daily market invariance. Insights, right. Okay, do, do screenshot this down before we continue. Okay, Abawa. Abawa Nya Mik E. Okay, I do hope I pronounce your name correctly. I'll take a look at Go. But before we continue on Go, do screenshot this down. This is for EU on the M15 chart. Okay, once you guys have screenshot it down, let me move it on to Go. Okay. Let me mark out the daily high and the daily low again. So we have a first, I like to mark out the market imbalance right here. Price haven't touched out this, even touched the, that area. So let me draw it. Mark it out as daily market imbalance. Okay, daily markets imbalance. And we have a story. What is going on with Go? Go has cleared the sell side liquidity. You can take a look. Go cleared before it bounced. So this is just a quick analysis on the daily on why, what might possibly happen. So we look at the four hour charts. Nothing much has happened yet. But we are looking at these four hours points of interest where price might possibly hit to. So we can set this as set this area as uh this is a four hours point of interest POI four hours inside right where price might possibly hit to this area, or it can hit to the daily markets imbalance. But before we continue, we haven't marked out the previous daily high and the previous daily low. So, previous daily high. And then mark out the previous daily low. I'm doing a fast one daily low. Bottom right. So actually adding all this up, it reads confluence to where price might hit to after it clears the daily row where we can search for a possible long. A possible long scenario might be this for price to clear the daily row or for, for go where I will start selling is right here. Looking for price to it up, clear the daily high. Maybe, just maybe we have some sort of reaction and price continues to go up. Daily markets in balance, break of structure, and then we search for a sell downwards. What do I mean by break of structure? Look at this. A lower low is formed or for the bottom, a higher high is formed. So these are the two scenarios I'm actually looking at for gold. I will only sell go if it hits this area or buy go if it hits this area so i do not trade within the daily the previous daily candle because price can fluctuate okay so how what what do you think of this analysis abawa abawa nyame kia i do hope i pronounced your name right Please screenshot this down. There might be quite a lot of waiting. Hopefully, these scenarios plays out during the New York session. What do you think about this analysis? Analysis, Abawa. This is go on the one hour chart. Good, thanks. No problem, no problem. It's just a scenario that I'm looking at. Why? Also, to add on to why I'm looking for price to clear this daily market imbalance, take a look using smart money concepts. 
there's this area. What do we call this area? So much area right here. This is liquidity. So I'll mark it out from the top all the way. Mark it out as buy side liquidity. So, okay, so what is buy side liquidity? Buy side liquidity is where people are looking to short. So same thing, adding confluence. What you want is confluence that tries to clear the final, final area with the market imbalance together with the buy side liquidity for a nice short. So let us take a look. We're using a Fibonacci. Using, look at this, from the top to the bottom. Look at this. It's, kind, it's nicely resting on the 50% area. We have even more confluence that this area have have a reaction 50% daily market imbalance with buy side liquidity and previous daily high. So this area has is a high, high probability short. So what about this area? Let us take a look. Let us take a look. Price goes up. And let me draw off FIPS. You can see there is a 78.6% Fibonacci line right there. So I'm using Fibonacci to add confluence to the four hours area and also the previous low and the previous daily low. That's the reason why I'm looking for a long at this area or a short from this area. So what we want is multiple, multiple confluences, especially with the use of a Fibonacci. So with these multiple confluences in mind, this is why I am looking for shots on go. Please screenshot this down before we continue. Please screenshot this down. This is the idea for a go long and a go short. Do you have any further questions regarding this? Do let me know in chat before I end my session on Vantage Markets. Do let me know. Please screenshot this down and hopefully this might give you an idea on a buy and sell signal. Okay, I wouldn't say a, a buy or sell signal, a possible buy or sell trade idea. Okay, do you have any further questions? If there are no further questions, I would like to thank you guys for joining me today on Vantage Markets for the live analysis session. My name is Chen Yongjin and I would like to thank you for joining me today and have a good day. Screenshot this down. And hopefully you guys learned, learned something from me today during this one hour session. Okay, thank you. Thank you for joining. Goodbye. Goodbye, guys. Bye-bye. Hey, no problem. Hey, thank you for joining me, Hounds Abdias. Thank you for joining me. No problem. No problem, Jen Pedersen. Thank you very much for joining. I do hope that you learned, learned a lot from me. Hopefully, I transferred some knowledge to you guys. Hey, thank you, thank you. Goodbye, goodbye. Goodbye, guys.